but yeah thank you so much for your for your time it's a real pleasure to to chat to you and uh yeah you as well you things to talk so i i i want to take you back as it were to there was a period when i was a teenager when you were in a lot of big films and you were quite prominent in a lot of these films that that we're going to talk about but also wild things was such a i mean for me that was such an amazing film to watch for the for the first time and now Thank it's had this you. amazing this amazing blu-ray release and the people over in the uk that do all these amazing blu-ray releases have given it this fancy new transfer and it's it looks amazing it looks amazing and it's fantastic to watch it again oh that's so great thank it's, you uh, it's so much <laughs> it's so it's really thrilling but also it's a lot of fun as well that film um so i wanted to take you back to when you first read it because i can imagine that was quite an experience to read that script for the first time given what happens and what, you, what all the characters going to go through in that film. Absolutely. You know, but I was just starting out my career and um, I remember I auditioned for it right after I finished filming um, Starship Troopers. Mm. And I auditioned for it a few times and kind of did a little screen test. Um, but I, you know, when you see something in a script, you never know if that's, where they're going to go sometimes they can say oh well there's no nudity or this or that you know uh but obviously with that one it was uh I had to do stuff that I had never done before um and I was you know very nervous obviously but I was so excited when I got the part to be able you know Nev was coming off of Scream and to work with um Matt Dillon and also Kevin Bacon and Bill Murray and everyone and I was a complete unknown so I, I was so excited to be able to work with the actors of you know that caliber. <laughs> yeah because on, on it sounds strange to say but on paper when you put all those names together and add Bill Murray and everything else you kind of think oh that's that's very interesting that's not a cast you would always kind of put together but it works. No, we, we were a very eclectic group. <laughs> yeah, but, it, it, <laughs> yeah. but it, it kind of works for the film. It kind of fits all of your personalities, kind of fit the film so well. Uh, I can imagine that it was a great experience to shoot as well, given that it felt like everyone was kind of perfect for, for their roles. You know, I, I learned a lot just by, because I was, you know, the new one um, of the group that was working in the movie, uh, you, you learn, you can go to so many acting classes, but the best class is on set. Mm. And this is something when people ask my advice when they're first starting out in this business, what do I recommend? And even if it's this, even if you are a background or if you have one line, stay on set and watch because you learn so much by watching. I learned more from working and watching everyone else um, and, and I did learn a lot in the acting classes and all the acting coaches that I work with, but you learn a lot by doing too. Yeah. There's a, there's a real fantastic chemistry between all of you, but what I love particularly about your, all the characters really is that that you judge them at the beginning, you know, the first sort of half an hour, you get a sense of what your character right. <laughs> is and what she's going to do. And then the same with everybody else. And it just spirals into this, into this fantastic kind of thriller with a lot of twists and turns did you when you were reading the script for the first time did you were you kind of guessing along the way as to you know not to give spoilers to anyone yeah. that hasn't seen it just what happens and what transpires in the in the final absolutely act? I loved it yeah and you know what they there were some the flashbacks at the end of the movie are my favorite scenes and you know because obviously it pieces everything together and there were some of those they added after afterwards oh okay not, they were yeah. not in yeah the flash a, and a lot of them were with bill murray yeah because a lot of the flashback scenes start you start to second guess yourself because you as an audience yeah the first time you're like oh okay i think i know what's going to happen and i'm like wait a minute that's right <laughs> that's different i wasn't expecting that and then you see their kind of yeah. interactions that you haven't seen in the first sort of hour and a half which is which makes and it I, I think that's the i think that's fun for the audience to mm. see that and um, and also, you know, putting the movie together and everything to, at the end, to add things that weren't in the script. Obviously, the, the the viewers don't know what the script actually was, but there was, you know, there were scenes that I think that were really fun to see at the yeah. end. 
Yeah. And for you, I mean, at that point in your career, it is a role. It was a role I can imagine because there's a lot of elements to, to her. There's a lot of things to say. You, you judge her at the beginning because she's come for money and got all these things on. But actually, she's a little bit smart. Right. People might realize right. she, she's it must have been a great character to play because she has a lot of depth to her. Oh, it was so fun to play that character. And especially so early on in my career, I had literally just finished Starship Troopers, which is the total opposite of the character of, you know, the character I played in Wild Things. So it was great for me to be able to show some, you know, two completely different um, characters and different genres. And it was, uh, I, I feel very grateful and blessed to be able to do that. Yeah. And now obviously you flash forward to now where I think the anniversary is coming up and obviously Starship Troopers is having an anniversary and everything else. There's lots of like TikToks and social media. I've seen on TikTok the scene where you throw the glass at Neve in the courtroom where you say, oh, you know, really? The people are using now because people are, you know, these younger generations are only just discovering these movies. Right. It's kind of these, I know. People going, oh my God, this film is amazing. And Denise Richards does this and Eve Campbell does this and Kevin Bacon does this. <laughs> You know, the day I threw the glass, they were very nervous. They they actually put a lot of plexiglass up for the camera operator so I wouldn't hurt them. Um, I'm a lefty, so I feel like I don't have good aim at all. <laughs> I feel like I'm backwards, but I knew that, uh, and they were shocked that I was able to hit where they wanted me to hit. But I think it came from pure fear and fear and nervousness. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I have to do this. And um, I was able to nail it where they wanted me to. And I didn't hurt anyone in the process. <laughs> that is one of the moments from the film that if you watch the trailer, <laughs> that is one of the moments that kind of sells the film because you're like, I need to see this. <laughs> Um, oh, and it was good. thank you. <laughs> it was uh, it was it was quite a big success as well, even back then, because you know these kind of movies don't really get made in the same way anymore. You know, there's all franchises, and I know it's difficult yeah. to get these kind of movies off the ground unless you do it with Netflix or you do it with with Amazon. So it's very right. much of its time. That must be great to be kind of like part of a time, almost like a time capsule, and that these movies kind of don't exist the same. Yeah, way. I know it is, and there's you know the subject matter. I think would be difficult to make now too. But, you know, it's also, there's a little tongue in cheek in it too as well. So I think that's also why it's been, um, you know, a, a, a cult classic type of thing, which I'm so happy to be part of. And, you know, I'm glad that people are still enjoying the movie. Yeah. I, I saw an interview recently with Kevin Bacon and he was talking about his nude scene and he was talking about how it's one of those movies that there's nude scenes from men and women, you know, it kind of does both things. Yeah. He talked right. about, you know, I don't get, he said, I don't get out of the shower in a bathing suit. I get out of the shower, how everyone gets out of the shower. Right. So why would it be exactly? Different? And it was kind of good that John wanted to make a movie that was kind of showed, because obviously you have your scenes, but then Matt does his bits, then Kevin does his bits. So it's kind of quite fair and quite progressive in some ways. I agree. And I, I actually think it was in a weird way ahead of itself. Yeah. Very, um, very much however, so. I will say, um, you know, having teenage daughters now, knowing I did this movie, uh, has been a little challenging trying to explain it to them. And they've told me that their friends have seen it. Uh, and my daughters have not seen it and they don't want to see it, which I don't, I'm glad I don't want them to. Because I wouldn't want to see my mom in that way either. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's, uh, but they're at an age now where <laughs> their friends are discovering things their mom did in her career when she was a little, well, not a little, a lot younger. So it's, you know, that's challenging too. Yeah, indeed. And what was, what was for you when, obviously I know you've had a long career and you've been going for a long time, you've done amazing things, but that when you went from Starship Troopers Wild Things, Drop Dead Gorgeous, and ended Bond. What was that? That must have been quite a whirlwind those few years when you were doing, because it kind of led up it to was. James Bond. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely a whirlwind. And each one was so different. Mm. Every, and as, a, as an actress that was just starting, you know, my career, it was so great to be able to do so many different characters and different genres. And and to have the, and now even at, at my age to 
see the impact that these movies have had on people and fans has been really incredible. And it, uh, you know, it's a wonderful feeling to see that people are still enjoying the movies. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what what is it like making a Bond film? Because they're, they're obviously they've come a long way since. Obviously, Daniel Craig has obviously now departed, but you did it when Pierce did it, which he was my yeah. James Bond. You know, I, when I was a teenager, he was the first kind of Bond film I saw in the cinema. I was old enough to see Goldeneye. What's it like, the experience of making a Bond movie? Because I can imagine there's, there's a lot crazy. of people and a lot of things going on in a Bond movie. Yeah, it is so epic and I had no idea the impact that Bond had on has on the the loyalty of all the fans I had never seen a Bond movie when I auditioned for it um after I got the movie uh Barbara Broccoli and her brother sent me every single Bond movie up to that point and I was like oh wow this is a big movie <laughs> I had no idea and I'll never forget when it was announced that on uh, uh, um, CNN that I was the Bond girl. I'm like, why is this such a big deal? I was asking my agent. He goes, do you have any idea that this is like a big movie? I go, oh, well, this is great. <laughs> and then when I did all the press for it, traveling all over the world and seeing, you know, the fans come out for all the premieres and everything is something that is really, you know, it's uh, it's it's uh it's incredible to be part of such an iconic franchise and to be you know a bond girl and and all of that yeah it's a, a it's be, oh, even more so now i guess but over over in the uk it's on bond is obviously a very big deal and there's right so <laughs> and everything about because even now i still talk about who's going to be the next james bond who's it going to be you know there's so much kind of things written about yeah him. that that, that was the biggest premiere i've ever been to in my life was in London. Yes, I can imagine. Bond is a, Bond is a big deal in, in the UK. Yeah, it massive, is. Massive deal. Um, I was reading beforehand about going back to Wild Things that you almost maybe somewhere down the line might have done a kind of sequel. Was that ever something that happened? Was I, it talked about? Or? Well, I was dead. My yeah. character died. So <laughs> I was never asked to do a sequel. <laughs> oh, okay. That's all right. Then. Did you ever hear the, I read this on, I don't know if this is true, that it was Matt Dillon's character was almost played by Robert Downey Jr., which. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't know. That is a true, that is a true fact. That's true. Yeah. Oh, okay. Could have been different for him. His career could have been different if he's done well things and not done Iron Man. <laughs> it's very, it's a very different film. Um, so he's had a very successful career, though. He's done okay. Downey. He's done okay. I don't think he, <laughs> he ever has to make any shabby. other films ever. I think he can just retire now and just happy yeah. with his life. <laughs> uh, and for you, obviously, I know that you've been doing some TV stuff and and everything else, and you've got a few movies coming out this year. Can you give us a a taste of any of those that are coming soon? Uh, I have one uh, that's coming out on Amazon. It's, uh, I almost said love actually, but it's love accidentally. <laughs> and it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, that one was already done. Um, and it's just, it's just a sweet, you know, romantic comedy feel good movie. And it's coming out uh, July 15th. Oh, so very soon. Exciting. Yeah, very soon. Exciting. Yeah. That's good. And as a, as a final question, then, if, if, if young audiences, maybe not your, your daughter or her friends and everything else, but if young audiences are going to discover wild things, what would you say to them in terms of, if, for your point of view, what would they expect? What, how would you sell this film to, to people? <laughs> well, um, when I made the movie, I did not think oh, one day my daughters might see this because I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't think about having kids in my 20s. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just um, the, the storyline is not appropriate for this day and age with, uh, you know, teachers and students, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, yes. But it, it's a fantasy. It's a, you know, it's a thriller and it's... Um, you know, it's uh, been around for a very long time and people have enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I enjoy it. I think it's, I, think it's <laughs> I don't know what else to say. To I think it's, I think it's, it you know, I think it's great. The storyline is not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little, it's obvious. Let's just say it's of its time, shall we say. Very, yes. <laughs> very nice, very late night. If we did it today, yes, it's very nice. If we did it today, I'd, obviously, I think that would be a different storyline, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's also very funny. 
I feel like it's a very tiny. Kind of- oh, it's, I feel it's, I'm so glad you say that. I feel like it's got a lot of humor in it too. Yeah, yeah, it's very kind of tongue in tongue in cheek in places. Obviously, yeah. obviously, Bill Murray is always funny, of course, but the film is like it's a little bit. If you take the tongue in yeah, cheek, yeah, it's a little right, tongue in yeah. cheek. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think it's great fun. It's great fun. Uh, Denise, thank you so so much for your for your time. Oh, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.